All right, welcome back to Francis Drake as Jen and I set sail for the Spanish Main, for the New World, for New Spain. Okie doke. And uh, Sir John will not be joining us because that's not how the two-player variant works. For the two-player variant stuff is now over. It was basically just blocking off some sections of the board and him grabbing some stuff during shopping. And now it's just me and Jen with me going first. But before we start issuing our orders, I have both the Admiral and the Governor, so I have to secretly deploy my or you know the Spanish frigates and the Spanish troops. Let's see. Let's do the frigates first. Now. Uh, in the two-player variant, of course, this one's gone, so one of these three of the two, zero, and one extra guns is worthless because I won't be able to put it on the blocked one. So it's really about these two. This guy who's in zone three that both Jen and I can get to, and this guy which is in zone four which only Jen can get to. Now, I can look and see that Jen has got five guns. And, you know, since she could get to both these ships. Which means it would be possible for potentially to attack both these ships and get two rubies. And these rubies are worth five points apiece. That's gigantic. But I think both she and I know that's not going to happen. Because she has five guns, but she really needs six. Because um, she knows that I've got a two and a one here. So at the very least, what I could do is I could just put the two here and the one here. And that means both of these then require six guns. And Jen knows there's no reason in the world for me to like you know put this zero up here because all that does is guarantee she could buy fire both ships. So that means let's just ignore this because we both know I'm not going to use it. Put that back. And I might as well just put the three over here and the one over there. Um, because in doing that, I've made it too expensive for Jen to hit both, which is her big advantage of being able to go to zone four. However, um, you know, I could still decide to put the four over here and the two over here, but in the situation I'm in right now, it's not that big a deal because I've got three guns and, oh, by the way, I should say, after the first shopping, I realized I was an idiot. When I went to the investor, originally I got two guns and one crew, but that was totally idiotic because having four guns wasn't going to do me any good. This is the only ship I can get to, and the most guns it could have is three. So having four guns was pointless. So I swapped it. I actually um, took two crew and one gun. So that's why I've got three guns. And so since I've got three guns, I'm not going to use them for anything else because I've got the longboat, which means I don't need to use guns on the shore attacks. So I might as well put the three here and the one here. In doing that, I'm guaranteeing Jen cannot hit both of them, and I'm also guaranteeing that you know I can hit this one. Now, who's going to get this first and get the ruby? Well, that's still up for discussion, but we'll see about that in a minute. So anyway, I have put my, and of course, my third one doesn't really matter. It goes down here, but there's no galleon to attack. Now, I've also got to deploy my troops. And there's um, two zeros, a one, and a two. Although, again, two of these four uh, tiles I'm not going to place because two of the forts are blocked. And I only put these on forts. So I think, once again, I'll get rid of the zeros. And Jen can pretty safely bet I'll do that, too. You never know. But I've got five crew. Jen's got four. And Jen knows that I don't need to use my guns, whereas Jen needs to use her guns and her crew to hit forts. But on the flip side... Let's see. Well, yeah, Jen, the fort she could get all by herself is blocked. So getting into zone four, really, zone four isn't really working out that. Remember, Jen, her last action was to get that barrel so she could get to zone four. But she can't use it to get ex exclusive access to this fort. And she knows full well she can't attack this. because Well, she could. She could attack this, and she could assume she could beat it. But it makes no sense for her to do that because, really, if she does this and she gets six points plus five, she's making 11. But then that leaves this for me. I get four plus, plus nine. That gets me nine. So Jen only scores two points more if she goes for this one, which is why she's definitely going to go for this because if she gets this first, she scores nine, and then if I come second, I only score four. So that's a five-point spread. So we both know she's going to be coming for this. And don't forget, she's got the hind. The hind is the special ship she guaranteed, which means the hind always goes first. No matter what I do, if Jen puts the hind here, she will get this. So I know it's a foregone conclusion she's gotten this. She's scored these five points. There's nothing I can do about it. It's pretty much preordained. There's, I don't think there's any kind of mental trickery I could do to solve that. It's not like I'd, I could make this a zero because I mean, if I could get over here, then I, it'd be a bit more interesting. If I can make it to area four, then I might have some stuff because then I might faint and you know, go for this, but then make it harder for Jen to get and I'd get that one. But as it worked out, that's the way that's going to be. Now, I mean, so, and, and this kind of the same thing is true for my soldiers. I've got two zeros, but I've got five so, or crew, and Jen's got four. 
And there are only two places these go. This one, where there's six plus three points on offer, nine points total. And this one, where there's four plus five. Uh, is, oh no, four plus four. So there's eight points on total here. So strictly speaking, Cartagena is the better place to go. Both, even if you're first, because you'll get uh, six plus three. Um, but even if you're second, uh, you'll get six as opposed to four. So in a perfect world, you want to be first in both of these, but nah, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, so I, that's why I have to put down some guards. And so which guards I'm going to put down is based on how many crew I've got and how I'm going to spend them. So like say if I put two over here, that means there's a total of four Spaniards guarding this fort. And I have five. So that means I could spend four of my five and I'd be able to take this safely. And Jen would be very, very worried about coming here because that would be all four of her crew and she wouldn't be able to do anything else. So that might make sense for me to do, in which case I'd put the one over here. Now, unfortunately, that means I can't afford to hit this other fort, which I would like to do um, because I'd like to be able to get four more points plus a gold. But then here's another thing. Here's another tricky thing. I only get four orders, right? Uh, because I didn't get the golden hind like Jen did. Jen's got five attacks she can do. I can only do four. Now, because I've got a trade goods, one of my four, one of them, let's say it's going to be order number four, is going to come over here to Santa Domingo or Santa Cuba. Can't come to San Juan. It's blocked. So I might come over here so I can get some trade goods. Because it would have been pointless for me to get this um, cube if I didn't use it. So that's one of my four. It's not an attack, but it's one of my four actions. So I've got three more actions. One of them is definitely going to be to come up here to hit the boat. And I want to be able to do it first so I can get that ruby. But I just don't think I can get that ruby first because I think Jen's going to do it. But even still, I want to hit this, this galleon anyway because otherwise it was a waste of time for me to upgrade to a galleon. And I wasted, you know, uh, uh, it was a real waste. So I'm going to come up here. That's two of my four. I've got two more. So let's say one of them is going to be coming down here because this is the best fort uh, at this point because if I, if I get it first... It's six plus three is nine points total. And now I've got one more. My last one could be to come over here to the other fort and then potentially get a gold and a, uh, what do you call it? Four points plus five, so, you know, or four plus four, so it's eight points. But here's the thing. I haven't talked about this. This is a little tracker of what attacks we make. Basically, the first time I attack a galleon, I move this over here to remind everybody I've attacked a galleon. The first time I attack a fort, I move this over here to remind everybody I've attacked a fort. And the first time, and these are all if, if and when, the first time I attack a town, I move this over here. After all of the voyaging is done and we go back home, we see how many of these we've done. If, if, if a person has done all three types, if they've done at least one galleon attack, one fort attack, and one town attack, they will score 10 bonus points. If they um, only did two. So say I didn't get a town. Say I, my other thing was, I hit both, I say I hit um, the galleons and two forts. So I only hit galleons and forts. That means I only score four points. That's six points lost by not hitting a town. But you say, hey, but you know what, getting this other fort, there's potentially eight points here um, instead of the six points I would gain. But Jen might be able to beat me to this gold, in which case I don't, it'd only be four points, so it's less than the six. Plus, also, if my last thing isn't to come over here, but it's just to take a town, a scene, so I come over here, and this is two points, then, um, you know, the, the four I get, you know, the, 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 the six I get, plus two more, it's definitely a net benefit whenever you can. In a perfect world, you always want to do one ship, one, or one galleon, one fort, and one town. If you can do that, you definitely want to do it because the, the value of it is just so great. Now, in a three, four, and a, with more player count, that gets harder and harder to do. It, it's very, very tough because there's a lot more competition out on the board. But with two and even with three players, it's not very, very hard to ensure you hit all three spaces. So I think it's going to be more important that my ultimate plan is to hit this town where I need two Spaniards. So two of my five are going to go here. So that means I want to hit over here. So that means my other three are going to come over here. So that means I want to put the one there, which means I put the two over here. All right, and that's my thinking. Okay, and, but now Jen can't be 100% sure of my thinking. She's gotta be asking herself, well, she knows I'm gonna wanna go for a town. And the only towns I can get to are, well, this one. No, actually, I'm sorry. This is the only town I can get to because I can't get to the town over in zone four. So she knows I'm gonna go for this town. She knows it. 
And the question is, is she going to get there first and get the silver? That's where the, you know, the order comes into account. That's where there's still some uncertainty. Is she going to get there first or am I going to get there first to get silver? She knows I'm going to spend one soldier here. So then she's got to ask herself, do I spend two soldiers here or um, do I spend two soldiers here? Which is the one that I make more expensive? Because Jen only has four um, guys. She's going to use one of them for this town that only she can go to. She can get this one completely unhindered and get this gold. So she's definitely, I know she's going to go for over here. It would be crazy for her not to. So then I know she's got three left over. And the question is, if I put two over here, then that three won't do it. And so, does she hedge her bets and go for this one, where even if I put my biggest number two, she knows she can hit that town, whereas this one's a gamble. But remember, this fort is worth one less. But by the same token, so, so she's going to have to decide which fort is more important. Anyway, so, but anyway, that's, why, that's how I'm going to put it. I'm going to put the two there and the one there. Okay. Now, I put all that. If somebody had gotten, or no, no, no. Now, we've, you know, all the secret orders are issued, which I got to order. If, if, I, if nobody had gotten the governor or the admiral, all those would have been random, and we'd all be guessing who knows where they'd be. But since the admiral and the uh, governor were both controlled by me, I pretty much controlled that. Next up, we start issuing orders. I am first. So, where's my, I've got them over here, my one, two, three, and four. Oop, not my ghost ship. I, I don't get the ghost ship. I don't get the hind. Oh, here it is, my one. And my, where'd my four go? Oh, here it is up here. Right. So now I can issue these orders in any order I want, and I issue them face down. And now this is where the bluffing mind game works, because both of us want to be first in all the places we're going to attack, so we can get the bonus points of those gems. But here's the thing. I know Jen's got the one, two, three, four, but she's also got the hind, which is a zero. She gets to place five things, and this one is guaranteed first. So wherever Jen puts this, she guarantees gets that. So is she going to put it up here and guarantee get the ruby? Well, this is worth the most points. This is worth five points. Or, um, or if we both compete, say, over this little town, because... Um, well, actually, that's the interesting thing. Are we going to compete over this town? Because Jen can get to a town over here that I can't touch. So is, are we going to compete on this town to try and get this silver? And because if Jen gets it first, she gets the extra five. Now, Jen knows that this is the only town I can go to because I can't reach the other town. And she knows I want to hit the town so that I can, sc I can score the perfect trifecta of attacks. So maybe she wants to put her hind over here so she can get that from me. But then that means she wouldn't be getting this from me. And uh, we both have access to both of these forts. And who is going to go for which forts? I know the troop power of both, but Jen doesn't. And if she takes a risk and this turns out to be a four, then um, you know, all four of her guys would go here, all four of her troops would go here, and she would not have the opportunity to go to a town. So she is in a bit of a pickle. But it's me first. I get to choose first. Where am I going to put my things? I, I say, wherever I put my one, if Jen beats me with a hind, um, then she gets it. I think I'm going to put my four down first and try and wait and see what Jen is going to do. Now, what do I care? What do I know is the least like? I think for, I'm going to put my four down and I'm going to come over here to Santo de Cuba. So I'm saying the fourth place I'm going to hit when we set sail is Santo de Cuba. Because remember, I've got a trade good. And so this is kind of a stalling tactic for me. I'm just wanting to wait to see what Jen is going to do. Okay. Uh, because I, you know, I really want to see what she's going to try and show a preference for before I, make it, before I commit any of my higher values. So now Jen, I'm not going to show what she's doing, but she's got a die. I don't know what it is. And you know what? She's going to do the exact same thing, and she's going to come here also. And I have no idea, but now I know one of us gets first dibs on these and one of us gets second. Now, it doesn't really matter because we're early on. But in the, in the second and third voyage, being denied the coffee you desperately need could be bad because you're trying to get you know, a, a set of four, a you know, set collection. But right now, we're both going to go here. We're both going to get one. And, so I'll, and chances are, Jen put her four down here as well to stall to see what I'm going to do. Okay, so now i got to commit something a little bit more important to me. Mm. Let's see. Well, I'm going to assume that Jen is going to use her hind here so that she can guarantee get herself the ruby, um, which is worth five points. <clears throat> so I'm not going to waste my one here. I'm going to put my one over here because I want to guarantee, since I think we both might go to this town, I want to guarantee that I get this silver. Uh, you know, because it is uh, an extra three points. And plus, I figure Jen's got this other town. She might not even fight me on this town. But remember, she gets to place five things compared to the four. So, and I think, 
Jen then is going to say, hey, yeah, you know what? I'm going to come there too. And she, so there's, a, there's an advantage to being first. You get to split ties, but there's a disadvantage to being first because you have to tip your hand before your opponent does. And right now, Jen's just following suit. Okay, so now I've got my two and my three. Remember, I know what I want to do. And I don't want to, the biggest question that Jen doesn't know, and I know this, is do I don't want her to know what these two are. So I don't want her to know which of those two towns I'm going for. So um, I guess I will put my two up here at the, uh, what do you call it, the hind. I mean, I know she's going to put her hind up here, so I can't beat it. So I might as well put my two. And let's see, and now what's Jen going to do? She's just going to continue. She's just going to kind of continue being a jerk and pausing and waiting to see what I'm going to do. So she's put something up there as well. <laughs> All right, so my last order. And so now I have to reveal. Now, because I'm kind of, well, not really. Now, because Jen can see that I'm going to spend one Spaniard here to go to this town. Jen knows that. And Jen knows I've got four left. So Jen knows I could afford to go here or here. And so it's at this point that I reckon I will go here. Okay, now's my last order, and now Jen's gonna place some orders, and she is gonna place an order over here. Not surprising, because she's the only one who can get to this town, because she has the four supplies. And then she is gonna place an order, right, over here. And she has one more, because not only did she get the hind, she also got her ghost ship, so she's going to come here. So I placed four orders, Jen has placed six. Okay, and now all our orders are deployed. We do, we will have, we'll flip them shortly to see how it worked out, who, who went where. But before that happens, if one of us had the informer, and we don't because um, Sir John got it, but if one of us had the informer, one of us could now peek. You could either peek at what the orders are, or could peek at what the tile is of one zone, and then move discs around to respond. But since neither of us took the informer, um, you know, Jen would like the informer. Jen would have loved to have the informer to know what this is before she committed to it. But she just had to go on ahead and do it blind. Um, so anyway, so we are done with that. But she would love to have the informer if she could have had it. And so now nobody did the. No, uh, Sir John had the informer, so nobody peeked. And now we reveal everything. So let's see. And remember, oh, I was sure Jen was going to put her hind here, but she didn't. She put her one, and I put my two. So if I had put my one here, if I had assumed Jen wasn't, if I put my one here, we'd be tied, and the tiebreak would go to me, and I would have gotten this gem. But Jen used her hind elsewhere. So my going first, ah, alrighty, well, so, so she'll get first dibs on this and she'll get the ruby. What else? See, we're both competing here. This one, oh, we're both four, which means I get first dibs, but it doesn't really matter because again, we break on a tie. So Jen's coming over here. She, it's her second thing. This is her third thing. Let's see, we came over, over here and I'm doing one and this is her hind. This is where she chose to beat me. So she will get the silver. So she got the silver and, so that's the power of the hind. Because I didn't know which way she was going to go. She had first dibs on both of these. If I had guessed otherwise and I had put my one here, then I would have. But it was a 50-50 chance. I just couldn't guess which way she was going to go. I figured she'd use the hind there. She figured I was going to figure that. And so she went there. All right, what else were we revealing? Oh, over here in my three. And this is where she put her ghost ship. So she decided to chicken out. She did not want to take the risk of what this was. Because if this had been a four, remember, it would have used up all four of her crew and she wouldn't have been able to do anything else. So she put her ghost ship here. But see, here's the thing. If she had had the informer, she would have peeked. And she would have seen that this was a one. At which case, she would have swapped this ghost ship out with, um, you know, with, with, uh, with this thing over here. She would have swapped because then she would have been able to put her two in. She would have gotten here first and she would have had enough left over to do that. So if she'd had the informer, this ghost, the ghost ship plus the informer would have helped out really well. But it didn't work that way. Let's see. And so everything's or revealed. All the orders are set. And now we set sail in kind of a preordained fashion. So um, I'm first gen second. And we put these over here as a remainder, reminder of player order just for ties. Although in a two-player game, you're not going to forget. But for three or four or four or five player games, you put these over here so you don't keep track of what the original turn order was. So we're going to set sail. First of all, who had the hind? Jen. So Jen gets to go first. First, she sets sail all the way down here and is the first to attack Portobello. Now, to attack this, she only needs one Spaniard, so she spends one of her crew. And she scores two points and she gets the silver, which is three. So she basically just made five points. 
and she just scored one, two points. All right, now, and so the hind is done. Now we go on to our ones. I, I'm the first player, so I go to my one first. It means I got to Portobello too late, and so I didn't get the silver. I attack with one crewman, and I get two points as well. Okay, then, now um, Jen sails to her space number one, all the way up here, and she was the first to attack the galleon, which means she'll get the ruby. Now this is only if she succeeds. So now that she gets up here, she finds out what I did, although she's pretty safely sure, and she's right, it was a two. So this is toss her a total of three cannons, here goes the three cans. Remember, she had five. So she expected she was going to have to spend th the total, the maximum she could. So she spent her three. So that means she defeated one of the galleons. She gets the ruby and four points. One, two, three, four. Okay. And so that was that. That was her number one attack. And now my number one. Oops. Uh, sorry, I've already done my number one. So now we move on to our number twos. I sail up here and once again, I'm Johnny come lately. I give up three cannons, all three of my cannons and I get four points. One, two, three, four. And that was my number two, and so now Jen moves on to her number two, Bloop, over here to Havana. She's the only one to come here. And now Jen reveals what I did. And it is three. This is what she expected, and she is not fine with that. Oh, uh-oh. She's in a bit of trouble because I was an idiot and I can't count. Oh my gosh, I was a big fat dummy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is bad news for Jen. This is why she needed the informer, because if she could have peeked, she could have swapped stuff around. See, that's the thing. She had to assume either this, oh, I totally counted wrong. She needs three guys here, but then she needs one more to attack in this town. She needs four, but she only has three. Oh wait, oh wait, oh wait, no, no, no. But it's okay because she's already attacked in this town. So she hit a town. Right, I forgot. I was supposed to be doing this as I went. Jen attacked a town, so she got that. I attacked a town, so she marked that. We both attacked a galleon now. We both need to attack a fort. So Jen is going to use her last three soldiers, her last three crew, and where is she? You know, it's one plus three. So, so she had the three she needed. She gets this gold, and she gets four points. One, two, three, four, and she has successfully attacked a fort now. And that was her number two. Okay, now me, I move on to my number two. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Number two, number two, number two. Where are you, number two? Oh, wait, no, I'm moving on to my number three. So I'm coming over here to Cartania. So I got here first, hooray! But that's because Jen never came here at all with her ghost. So I come here, I need to give up three crew, which I've got handily. And that means I get a silver, my first gem, and I get six points. One, two, three, four, five, six, hooray! Okay, so that was my three. Or that was my three. Right, and now Jen sails on to her three. Ah, now this is interesting. You know what? I'm going to say a change. I'm going to say Jen surprised me by putting the four here and the three here. Is this what, if I thought about it a little bit more, this would have been smarter for her. So let's say when we reveal, this is what, so she was the first person to come here and get a good, and then her four was over here. So now Jen is sailing on to her number three space, bloop, three, where she gives up her trade goods, some silks or whatever, from the old world, and she could take the coffee or the sugar. I guess she will take the sugar because in the future, if she, if she wants to get coffee, coffee could be gotten in the first zone. So she's going to take coffee um, because coffee is easier to get in the future. She doesn't have to sail as far to get coffee um, in case she has less supplies in the future. So she just picked up a coffee and that was her third. And now I sail onto my third. No, I sail now. I've done my third. Now I sail onto my fourth. My fourth spot, um, I got here and I had a trade good and I got the sugar. And now Jen can sail to her fourth spot, which is coming over here. But now here's the interesting thing. Here's why I switched this. And again, if I'd been smart, I would have done this originally. Jen can now sail to her fourth, where she needs one crew member to attack this town. However, Jen is, has no more crew. Um, oh, wait, wait. Where did she go to attack a fort? Oh, right. Oh, yeah. When she attacked this fort, she had to give up her main and she had to give up her cannons. I forgot about that. Sorry. Okay. So now her fourth space is to come over here. And she has no more crew. This is why she saved this until the end, or at least she would have if I had been smart. Because she wasn't sure if she was, if she had, if this had been a one here and she hadn't used her crew, she'd have one more, she could come here and get another goal. So that's why she came here. But she hedged her bets. This was her last place. Coming here is a waste of time. She knows it. So instead of coming to the fourth, she is going to withdraw from the Spanish main and go home early. And if anybody ever does that, if anybody ever 
passes and doesn't do all four of their core actions, they go home early, and because Jen does that, she gets two more points. The second person to do it gets one point, but that, again, that's only if you pass early. And that's why Jen saved this for the end, because she thought she wouldn't be able to do it. If she could have, she would have done it. And that would have been the case if this were a one or a zero. But since it was a two, she couldn't do it, so she sailed home early, got two bonus points, and this thing never happened, and this gold never got picked up. Okay, and so now I've done all four, and so I, now it's my turn again. I've done all my four, so now I come home. I don't get a bonus point, because I did all four of my actions, so I have just come home. And we are done. So one ship didn't get attacked, one fort didn't get attacked, and everything else got attacked. Alrighty, so we now get final score um, for, let's see, and I, let's see, I did a town too, right? I did this fort, oh wait, no, I did this town, and I did this fort, right. So all three of us did all three things. Right, so now we get final scoring of the round, which means since both of us did all th hit all three locations, we both get 10 points. So we're at from um, 12 to 22. Also, um, since I have the governor and the admiral, I get bonus points if any silver or gold were left over. One gold was not attacked, and so the admiral says, thank you, thank you for not taking our Spanish gold, and so I score one more point because that one gold was not taken because um, Jen didn't have enough crew. If she'd come here and gotten it, well, she would have gotten a point and she would have gotten this, but as it happened, because uh, I had the governor, I got a consolation prize of one gold. Right, and is there anything else? Nope. So that is it. That was the end of the first voyage, and we are now ready to begin the second of three voyages. So what we do to set up for the next round is any equipment we didn't use goes home. So um, I'm done with my longboat. I never used this crew because I just didn't have enough actions. Now I could have. I could have used that. Instead of getting trade goods, I could have come and I could have attacked. Couldn't I have, no, I couldn't have attacked the other town because I couldn't reach zone four. And I could have attacked the other fort because I could reach zone three. And if I had actually put um, if I had made this a zero instead of a two, then I would have been able to come here and I would have been able to attack. But I knew if I had done that, then Jen would have had, because she had a um, you know, crew left over, so that's why I didn't do it. So this crew, I ended up never using. Jen used all of her stuff, so that was nice. Um, oh, by the way, I totally forgot, this is as an aside. Um, these cubes are, as a reminder, uh, Jen was supposed to put her cube here, I was supposed to put my cube here as a reminder that Jen could get to zone 4 and I could get to zone 3. I forgot to do that. And again, in a two-player game, it's not important. It's easy to keep track of. But with four or five players, it's really good to, at a glance, know, right, uh, there's only two people who can make it out here, me and somebody else. But everybody can make it to this zone. That's what those were for. Forgot about that. Anyway, so we still have to clean up. Um, my barrels go back. Jen's four barrels go back. Oh, but they roll around and they're slippery, so I'll have to pick one up later. I see all our shopping discs come home. And I dropped one of those. Oh, I'm being very... And our orders come home. And our marker comes home. Jen's orders go home. And her marker and her shopping. Goes home. Let's see. We both downgrade our ships back to regular ships. Hello, hello. Uh, all the Francis Drake stuff, of course, comes back. Around out Francis Drake, uh, Sir John. Sir John Hawkins. Let's see. So we get all our shopping stuff back. We refill the trade goods that were bought. So there's always a full complement of trade goods every voyage. Um, let's see. The Spaniards and the... The frigates go back, because they'll be reset by whoever becomes the governor and the admiral. The um, three galleons get randomized again. So randomizing them. Random, random, random. I don't even know. Uh, this one will go here, this one will go here, this one will go here. And we were, there's the six, there's the four, and oh, the eight. The most valuable one is in zone two. That's very interesting. You won't have to sail very far to get to the most valuable galleon in the next year. Now that's interesting. Okay, we put back out the rewards, all the rubies. Oh, well, actually, although actually, now in a two-player game, of course, um, we have to re-roll to find out what gets blocked because it might be different stuff that gets blocked this time. So let's go ahead and block off the new stuff. Alrighty, so where's the die? Here we go. And, do I have that chart? Yes, I still do. Okay, it's a three. 
number three gets blocked. And if we look over here, number three is the galleon of zone three, the forts of zone three and four, Santo Domingo, etc., etc. So let's start blocking stuff. The galleon of zone three. So um, this, the six pointer, is not available to us. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, but that means the eight pointer is, and it's easy to get to. You only need two supplies to get there. Let's see, so the galleon and Santo Domingo. So. Uh, so we cannot pick up this sugar or this tobacco, um, which is, I think, and I already got a sugar, so I don't care about that, but, um, you know, neither of us have, but Jen doesn't have sugar or tobacco, so she cares about that a little bit more than I do. Let's see. And, um, San Domingo, let's see, the forts of zone three and four, the forts of zone three and four. So once again, we cannot get to these forts. Oh no, actually, so this fort is blocked off, and this fort is blocked off, and the towns of zone one and two are blocked off. All right, so we can get to the close forts, but to get to the far but the towns, we have to go far. Okay, so uh, you know, that's all blocked off again, and so we put out more precious gems. There's a silver there, and a silver there, but no silver, and um, a gold, and there's a gold there, but no gold and gold, so there's two silvers, two golds, and two Ooh, precious rubies. Okay. And, oh, and then the last thing we do is we reset up. So all these now have to be randomized again. And that will make a huge difference, a very, very big difference in how the shopping goes. Because, you know, if the hind comes first, you know, we want to go for it desperately. If, um, you know, maybe um, all the really good stuff comes at the end and up front it's just a bunch of guns and crew, you never really know. Let's see, again, it's just kind of a random way of doing it. Ah. Much easier to do this with two hands, as you might imagine. Let's see here. That's it for the first street. All right. And so the informer's all the way at the end there. All right. So the queen is pretty close, and then the upgrade for the shipyard is farther away. Um, oh, the tavern is the very first thing. Drake is, actually, I think Drake, it, nope, Drake is almost in his normal spot. Uh, supplies early, supplies late. Trade goods are all bundled up here at the end. If you want to get trade goods, you can wait a while and get them all at one fell swoop. So shopping takes on a very different feel. And then the last thing, we have to determine who will be first to go shopping. And that, that honor doesn't go to who returned first, but who is in last place. Jen, is because I scored that one extra point, Jen gets to go shopping first. So actually, this order is correct. Jen goes shopping, then me, and then Sir John. Okay, and we are now set up for the second round of the game. And once again, we have to go shopping for provisions. We uh, have to pay attention to what can we get, what is blocked off, what's available. Do we want to stay all the way out here to zone number four? Because there's a gold sitting here. Or maybe zone four isn't as attractive this time because the lowest value galleon is out here. And um, you know, a, just a, a simple town with only one defense, but a gold. So this is uh, five points sitting here. This is nine points sitting here. So if somebody gets here, they have pretty much unfettered access to nine um, uh, to uh, 14 points. But the best ship, oh, and I'm sorry, I should have put a ruby there. Yeah, okay, yeah, this ship is blocked, sorry. But there's um, eight, there's 13 points sitting right here within easy reach. If somebody goes for heavy, heavy guns and maybe gets the Admiral, they pretty much all but guaranteed could get 13 points. But both of us will probably get at least two supplies, so we could both make a run on this. So that's really interesting. The two, you see, now the two, four, uh, you know, the, the two forts that are out, let's see, there's this one, and, oh wait, wait, did I block correctly? Which forts? It was zones three and four, the, this fort and this fort. Right, okay, yeah. So this fort and this fort are out. And now there's a very big difference. This fort is worth a total of six points. This fort is worth nine. And you only need one supply. It's a valid thing to choose to only get one supply and only come to this region because the best fort is here. Although if you only come to one region, you can get the best fort. You could get a couple of trading goods, but there's no other town. So you at least want to come over here. Ah, oh, but to be able to get to a town, both the short towns, so to get to a town, you have to come to at least region three. So you need at least three supplies to be able to get the full benefit of you know, the 10 points. So are, are you gonna get three supplies or do you give up supplies so that you can, um, you know, maybe, because it's, maybe it's worth giving up the 10 pointer to be able to get this 13 point ship 
if you only go, if you go for more guns instead of more supplies. And those are the things you're thinking about as you go shopping, all the while competing with Sir John, who might snake out the thing that you're so desperate to get. Or your opponent might do it too. And so anyway, we're set up, ready to go for round number two. And that was a full playthrough of the first of three rounds of Francis Drake with the official two-player variant. Okay, folks, there you go. If you'd like to hear some final thoughts now, you know what to do. The button is on screen. Hit it in five, four, three, two, one.